In this movie, I will show you how to enable constraints when fitting. You will learn the syntax for writing constraints for groups of parameters. Here I start with a graph with three exponential decaying curves. To fit the data, I select Analysis, Fitting, Nonlinear Curve Fit. The first step is to choose the function I wish to fit with. I then go to the data selection. For input, Origin automatically assigned the active data plot. Clicking the arrow next to the input data, I can add all the plots in my graph window. You'll now see that we have three input ranges. With multiple ranges, we can specify the multi-data fit mode. Let's do a global fit. A global fit will fit all data sets simultaneously, allowing parameter sharing. Now let's go to the Parameters tab. We have three sets of parameters, one for each of our input ranges. To make this list shorter and therefore easier to work with, I'll click the Hide button and hide all but the T1 and T2 parameters. Now let's fit until converged. Now let's see how these parameter values will change if we add constraints. To add constraints, you need to go to the Code tab and select Constraints. Let me check the Enable Linear Constraints checkbox. What I enter here will be used. If I click on the Hints tab at this point, I'll get some hints on how to enter constraints. If I wish to constrain all the T1 parameters to be greater than 0.2, I enter the following. T1, in parentheses, A for all, greater than the value 0.2. Now let's constrain T2, all the T2 parameters, to be less than 0.045. So from the hints, we see that each constraint should be entered and followed by a semicolon. We can also go down to the new line and type T2, A, for all, less than 0.045. When the constraints are entered on a new line like that, you don't actually have to have the semicolon. So we can leave it with or without the semicolon in this case. Now I go back to Parameters. Notice that this Fit Until Converge button is enabled again. We'll go back to Parameters so we can watch these change when we do the Fit, and they should use the constraints that we entered. So all our T1 parameters are indeed greater than 0.2, and the T2s are less than or equal to the 0.045 value. Let me click OK to accept these results. Now let's switch to another graph and do some replica peak fitting. This graph has four peaks. To fit these, I'm going to select Analysis, Fitting, and again, nonlinear curve fit and open the dialog. This time for the function, I'm going to choose Lorentz. Now I need to go to the advanced settings and set the number of replicas, which is the number of peaks minus one. So we set this to three. Based on these peak finding settings here, notice that Origin automatically found all four peaks. Then if I go to the Parameters tab, this means that all four sets of parameters here have been initialized. So again, let's fit until converged. Now let's say we wish to constrain the widths so that the width of each peak is less than or equal to the previous one. So we remember from the previous example that we go to the Code tab, we select Constraints, we enable them, and then we can enter them in here. It's helpful to go to Hints, and in fact, I can scroll down, and the last example here is for replica fitting. So if I highlight this, and by the way, this is just the shorthand notation for this up here, which is what we want. Each successive peak width is going to be smaller. So I can copy this, paste it up here, and the only change I need to make is because we have the three replicas. Now let's go back to parameters so we can watch them update when I do the fit. Again, it would make it easier here if we click hide and let's hide all but the width parameter. 
Now we can see here that each one here is less, so it starts off um, here, and each successive peak width is smaller. OK, so the constraint was used. And again, to accept these results, we can click OK. And this concludes this tutorial. Thank you for watching.